G'day guys, welcome to Sumo's Projects. Uh, today we're going to have a shop tour. Come on in. So this is a 9 by 9 metre workshop uh, garage. Uh, it's been something that's had a lot of adaptations over the journey. Um, we all think we've got it right at any given time, but time and time and that proves to be the uh, thing that's wrong. <laughs> so the evolution of workshop. So starting off, we walk in the double doors. Um, I've got a, a full bore, uh, I think it's a three quarter horsepower um, dust extractor. Now you can't buy these anymore, these are from Bunnings, that's our box store here in Australia. Uh, it's a great little machine, um, you can set it up so it automatically comes on. Well, I run that with my miter saw um, and it hasn't let me down, so that's a good thing. So this is set up to, uh, it, it's piped in uh, under here. And that runs through to the uh, miter saw sta station. Um, also got a secondary Ryobi canister type uh, vac, shop vac. Um, this is also runs at the same time because I had this one as a spare. And uh, I think that just adds to the overall collection of dust, which is seems to work all right. Uh, just uh, I've got a couple of things like tape and um, uh, different hanger material hanging up on the wall here. Um, I, I think in the future, what I want to do if I have a if I ever move, which is might be on the cards, uh, I'd like to have a dedicated tool walls just all around my workshop. But here we have the uh, 12 inch Bosch axial glide miter saw. This is a, a magnificent tool. I've loved it since I bought it. Um, a lot of people have done reviews on them. I, I think they're just. Uh, a little bit ahead of their time, you know, having that space saving function at the back. Um, so yeah, no complaints with this. I'll just uh, we'll turn the camera around and I'll just show you a little bit of the setup here as I have it set up on a on a mobile base. So that's always a handy thing to have. So this is a stop. Uh, we came up with this idea. It's, um, it's basically an extension. Now with this stop, it can be uh, extended beyond the uh, actual fence on the uh, miter saw station. So it gives me an extra uh, few feet here, and that's really handy if you want to cut just that little bit longer board. Um, so that's been a godsend that. Now we'll turn that over and we'll see how closely we can get to the blade. As you can see, this can actually get up very close to the blade. You don't want it any closer than that really, but um, it's something that's adaptable and gives you just that little bit of extra um, travel, you know, rather than setting up a, a different type of stop lock system. Uh, this is just uh, a universal thing where you can flip it over, have it extend longer or bring it in very close to the blade. And I found this to be simple and easy thing, but um, it works. So the uh, the shop vac hose, just normal setup, plugs into here, and you can see there's the port there for the four inch traction part of it. I've got a little light here, just a little addition in case you're, uh, you know, you've got a very dim day, and that works well. This is an old uh, six drawer cabinet that was in bedroom, you know, back in the day. Uh, you, you can see by the design, it's quite old, but uh, it does the job, houses a lot of things, and uh, the storage is good. Look down here, got some heavy duty casters uh, there at the back as well, so I can move this anywhere in the workshop. Got the housing for a couple of jigs, so I've got a, um, a jig here for my miter, and I set that up, uh, it works great. And also a spline cutting jig here. There's a video out on that. If we turn our attention to this side now, we've, we've come into the workshop, gone to the left. Now we're 90 degrees, starting from the corner. Got a, I bought a kit, box kit with a Ryobi gear in it. Um, use that for whatever, put things back in. Um, that's been handy. And also a mobile uh, rack where I put a lot of screws and things like that. Uh, recently I bought myself this um, holster, Ryobi holster set. Uh, they were quite cheap, so it's lockable. 
and got my uh, battery recharge unit in there, as well as a few other things. Uh, that's a real welcome addition to the workshop. Here I have a, um, a tool chest. Now I've only ever bought one in my life and uh, it was from Aldi. I did a video on that as well. So it's in my back catalogue. Obviously pretty good setup. Nice thin drawers, which you probably don't want too thick a, or too deep a drawer. But on top of that, I've set up my uh, Craig uh, pocket hole station. So I've got the K4 here uh, and that's got the uh, armor tool uh, clamp that was a little bit of a mod and it gives you greater capacity for a little bit thicker materials to be able to uh, put pocket holes in both uh, both sides so you do it on one side flip it over on the other and it gives you that additional strength um, which is really good latest addition is the uh, 720 Craig and I'll tell you what <laughs> if you haven't got one of these or if you haven't got a pocket hole you, this is one to probably save your money up for uh, They've got a little bit of criticism from other makers on YouTube, but I, I don't know why. I think just so they get their views up, give it a rating. I don't know. I reckon it's a bee's knees. It's it's one of the uh, most improved type of pocket hole jigs out there on the market and uh, easy to use and great fun to be able to play around with. So I love it. Hey, Brad. I've had this one set up for years. Uh, it just houses a couple of uh, longer clamps, a couple of Bessies cutters and a couple of cheap aluminium ones. Yeah, this little new acquisition um, is a Sherwood 13 inch dedicated spiral helical head uh, thickness up. And I'll tell you what, it, it, once again, save your pennies and get yourself one of these because it won't let you down. Um, the, the cuts that this thing takes, very little sanding needed and um, you, you'll be pleasantly surprised. So, fantastic bit of kit. This is, I think, the PRS 1045 Craig Router Table. Uh, I made some modifications to this over the journey. So I built a, a, a dust drawer here. This has helped me no end. It just captures everything down. We get the hose, away she goes. Um, also got a four inch, four inch um, dust port at the back, but that's not perfect because dust drops through where the bit is. Also put cleats on the side, so this is to house all the uh, accessories to be able to interchange my um, router bits. I put this little extension part on as well. This uh, is actually for some of the paddles I use. I made these for another project video. Um, so you get a lot of dust coming out this way. If you've got small pieces, I made this block. This just allows us to uh, have the dust fly across, hit this, and drop down into this little tray. Once again, back and out. If the bits are longer, you can remove that and uh, you sweep. This is the uh, Sherwood Radial Drill Press. Um, you can't get this one anymore. I think I was one of the lucky ones to get the, uh, maybe the last few uh, when I went down and purchased one. So you have the ability to move it in and out. I think that's a fantastic feature. It's only got um, five gears, so that's all you need for woodworking. Um, I've set up a fence here, so that's easy to use. A drill press table, I should say. can make my adjustments, um, and that way I can dial in holes, which are gonna be aligned in the same place every time I drill. Well, as that, added T-Track. Once again, got the wonderful Craig uh, Auto Max, and uh, this has been one of the best things for as far as the drill press goes. Over here, this is a Shepak oscillating uh, spindle sander. I use this sometimes. It's good for doing curvature work, cleaning up, you know, taking a little bit of material. Um, handy little addition. Once again, it's mounted on something that's portable. You've got to have it that way. Uh, just got miscellaneous type push sticks and, uh, you know, just an untidy corner, but it works. This is the uh, 12 inch record power disc sander. Uh, it's dedicated for just having a disc. I like it, one tool, one machine. This is a heavy duty Sherwood 16 inch um, bandsaw. I use this for resawing or just chopping up uh, even stuff for firewood at times, but I kept a de uh, dedicated resaw blade in it and uh, it's beautiful, you know goes through like butter and that's all you want it to do. So this one allows you to do all your curvature cuts, you know, templates and that sort of thing. 
Uh, I've got lights. Now, if you're looking to buy lights for these machines, when you buy them, sometimes they're very expensive. Like this one, I think it was about 50, 60 bucks. I've got a set of two of these. They're barbecue lights, and I think they cost me uh, $40 for two. So, well worth having a look around. I made myself a dedicated smaller clamp, clamp rack, um, and it houses clamps this size, and also uh, some of my Irwin and also uh, Craig clamps. So that's been a welcome addition. Um, extending that, just put my F clamps, hung them up here on a, on like a coat rack, coat rack setup. This is part of my big wall build. Uh, it, I bought these drawers. Now they, these are magnificent. You can, you can see whatever is inside, nothing in that one, but uh, you get the picture. I'm going to get more of these because uh, that's the best storage solution I've found. Also, um, this wall I built to uh, separate the workshop from a few of the other things like the gardening tools and that, and that's worked great. That's worked really, really well. Um, also, it's got some more cabinets here. Down below, I built this uh, just for leftover corn ply, and it houses a lot of my uh, tools that stay in their cases, so that's a good spot for it. Moving along here, you can see these tools here. They, they've got um, the magnetic uh, strips in them, so they're a good thing to purchase. Uh, got a couple of old uh, holders that, I don't know, they ended up back in the shed, so I think the I made them uh, disproportionately sized for some of the condiments we have, so come in handy for here. Uh, spanners and things like that. I always keep them in their pouches because... Uh, I don't see the point of just grabbing one, walking away and finding out it's the wrong one. You might as well just take the whole lot and uh, be done. This is one of the first workbenches I built. Uh, I was so inspired by Craig and the colouring. I painted it blue. A little bit close, but wasn't really a match. Um, I've got a vice here. This is a really cheap uh, vice craft right brand from Bunnings. Bunnings never let me down, I think. Also made a drawer, so it houses... Uh, all different parts and components. That's been handy. I put all my forcing bits so and drill bits. So it's got an extendable drawer. And we're swinging around. Put these hooks on here on the end. And that's a little portable toolbox I can carry around for different applications as well. So that's pretty handy. So at the heart of everyone's workshop is the table saw. This is a Bailey Industrial 3 horsepower, um, 10 inch uh, table saw, and it's been magnificent. I made this investment years and years ago. I started out with a, a really cheap contractor saw and was disappointed uh, beyond belief. And I thought, look, if I'm gonna make the, uh, the jump into doing this for a long time, I better save me pennies, and uh, so I did. And this one came in at around about two and a half thousand dollars. Not cheap, but uh, compared to what's out there now, it's probably really well priced for what you get. So um, let's have a little look around here. Now I've got the outfeed here, so I can put my table saw sled, and then also have uh, once again another portable workbench with uh, dog holes in it. And I'll just pan around and show you a little bit of that. So let's do that. Down here I keep housed just a couple of squares, uh, a little jig for drilling holes, um, silicon mat which is handy for glue ups, and a hammer and a couple of uh, corner angle brackets. I built in here uh, some drawers, this was made from a lot of scraps left over and uh, just basically whacked them together as easily as I could and uh, a couple of dividers in between the drawers works wonderful. Here I have a uh, assortment of clamps. These are hold down clamps that go into the dog holes. Uh, work wonderfully well and really impressed with those. Also got a couple of more drawers here for miscellaneous components related to things to do with the table saw. I'm also running a single canister here. That's a Shabak. Shabak. Uh, that just is well enough to use for the table saw and um, I find that having that right next to it is just easy rather than having, um, you know, your main type of extractors running uh, lines everywhere, which is can be a bit of a hazard sometimes. So that works for me. So this is uh, the Bailey Industrial. It has uh, 
a nice slick cast iron surface in a 52 inch extension table which I probably never used but um, at the time I thought I might need it never mind it's always good to have a little bit more than a two uh, two less so it's been an absolute uh, workhorse in my workshop I love it and I would never get rid of this uh, I, I did think about getting a, another contractor saw maybe a DeWalt but uh, people talked me out of it and I'm glad they did so magnificent tool those of you who follow me on Instagram, I, I used to have a dedicated workbench here and it was dedicated to someone else's needs. It was an absolute nightmare for me. I could never fit tubs into it. Um, it had about that much uh, workbench space and then there was shelves. And I tell you what, it was just a nightmare. So I transferred uh, my cabinets across to this side and it's working a treat. I love it. and. Uh, I'm glad I did that. It was a couple of weekends chore, but you know, never mind. Got some good hardwood out of the whole workbench, so it was a winner winner chicken dinner. In this little nook here, I keep uh, that was a hardwood that I uh, did get out of the workbench, and also keep sheet goods, uh, so you know, that's always handy to have tucked away in a corner. And uh, yeah. last but not least, on this side of the tool wall, I've got all my ladders, they're hung up. Uh, I've got a trolley, uh, step ladders, got my wheelbarrow here, and just a few other type of accessories to do, a pallet breaker um, and a magnetic uh, sweeper, so good things to have. So this is pretty much it guys, if you've enjoyed this uh, little bit of a shop tour uh, and you want to subscribe to my channel because uh, I appreciate that, go ahead and do it. Uh, also hit the notification bell and all the fun stuff. So. Uh, let's keep making good stuff. So until next time, be well, stay safe, and uh, hooroo.